So let's have a look at how we would create a very quick and easy prototype provisional prosthesis based on a previous prototype that we've got here. So we want to just do this to be nice and quick. We don't want to spend ages on it. This is just a 3D print and be able to follow along easily watching on a video. If you're going to provide this as a CAD design and really spend the time to make sure the aesthetics are perfect, obviously at each one of the stages we're going to talk about, you could spend a little bit more on tooth libraries, shapes, and making sure that the emergence profile and everything is to your satisfaction. But let's go through the process so you understand the workflow. So the first stage here is we've saved everything, we've set up the arch, and we're going to click Design. And that will load up the dental CAD software, which will then ask it to bring in the data. So the upper jaw, that's the scan that we're going to bring in is the gingival scan, because we're going to bring in the scan ladder scan bodies separately. So let's go to the location we saved those two. And you can see if I widen this out a little bit, we have maxillary, which is the gingival scan we're going to bring in, and the scan body next, and also the pre-op. So let's bring in the maxillary first. And then it's asking us to bring in the upper jaw scan marker. So you can see from Medit we've exported this maxillary scan body. I'm going to click open. And then finally it's asking us to bring in the upper pre-op scan. So let's bring in scan ladder upper pre-op. And then it's asking us to bring in the antagonist. So let's click on that pre-op mandible. And then we're going to set the orientation here to be able to orientate ourselves later on. So we're going to set that with the view straight down as a bird's eye view. I'm going to click next. Do we need to create the, uh, correct the pre-op placement? We don't in this case. So we're going to click next. Now, if you were following a more detailed workflow, we could follow along and go through Smile Creator. But there is a Smile Creator tutorial that is separate to this. And I would suggest watching that if you want to involve bringing in 3D scans or face, facial pictures to be able to plan the midline or the occlusal level perfectly. But for this, we're just going to click skip. So the next stage is we're going to identify the scan bodies themselves. So in your library, you should now have the scan ladder library from the install instructions previously. So we're going to collect, connect either with direct to multi-unit or we're going to click with tie base. The choice is yours to make and it depends on what workflow you're going for as to whether you choose something which is going to use a screw which is direct to the multi-unit. For example, we have the Rosen, Powerball, Vortex, Desk, anything up to the IPD screws or you have different options for the tie bases and we have these options here. Keep in mind, this list is open. So if you want to add more to this library, if there's a specific tie base, you can send us that library, we can integrate it for you. But for now, we're just going to click on to direct to multi-unit and go with the conventional Rosen screw. If you get a warning, don't worry about that, use anyway. And it tells you which tooth we're going to be aligning to. So we've got tooth 1-6. So I'm going to click 1-6. So let's move on. We're going to click the next. And the next. And the next. And so on until we've gone through each one. Identifying the position of each one of those cylinders. And that should give us some precision that you'll be able to see within this soft tissue here. But there will be obviously slight discrepancies because of the accuracy of the edential scan itself. Once we've done that, we can click Next. And it's going to ask us to identify the emergence profile of each one of these multi-units, which again, we can ignore. So we can go through all the way through and each of those position here. The next stage is to position these virtual teeth. Now, what we're going to do in this workflow is copy the provisional shape. So we don't need to spend too much time on this. It's just roughly putting these teeth into a position that is in line with these teeth that are there from the provisional. So 
So I'm going to move this down. And that's it. We don't need to spend any more time on that because of the next tool we're going to use. So if we click Next, it's asking us now to bring in and adapt the abutment bombs. But again, because of the emergence profile, there is none. So we're going to click Next. And it'll give us the option to freeform, but we're going to ignore that again. So I'm going to click Next and Next. And that takes us to this stage. So because we were happy with that provisional, now we're going to copy this. So we're just going to click Adapt Model Teeth, and it will change the shape of those teeth to fit in with this provisional that we've got in place. So this means that if you've got a patient with a provisional or a denture or a partial denture, and you're happy with the shape of those teeth, you can align this and obviously spend the time then just adapting to how it's going to fit onto the soft tissue. So I'm going to click Next. And this is where I'll turn everything off. So I'll turn the jaw scans off and also the scan abutments. And that'll give us the view we've got here. And now I'm just going to spend a little bit of time bringing this out. And once I've brought all of this out, because it's adapted it to the soft tissue, I'm going to smooth it all back. And I'm going to show you a really super quick way to do that. But we need to bring things out a little bit first. Now the base of this you can see is sitting below the gum to make our lives easy. We're just going to click that basal adaptation and that's going to cut that away ready for us to smooth out. If we want to adjust the occlusion then we can click static occlusion and again it'll adjust that. There. So now we've built those out a little bit and adapted it to the gum. The next stage is just to go to smooth and I personally like to make this really super quick and easy by holding down the shift button but making the scale of this quite large. So the size here, this will mean that we can just very quickly and easily just quickly click around. To smooth out all of these bits of ugly data that's sticking through. You can see that's already made a big improvement. And we're just going to smooth back the edges without holding down the shift key here. But keep in mind, all of this is going to get joined. And this is just for a provisional. That is just to give us an idea of how things are going to sit. Or you might do this for the same day surgery. I've just been able to have something really nice and quickly designed so that you can then print this off. So once we've done that, the next stage is to bring in the gingival scan again. And you can see that this isn't all the way through the gum in a lot of places. And we want it to create a little bit of compression there. So I'm going to turn this view down just slightly. So that then, once I've done that, I can add a little bit to have this set just a little bit more ovate and into the way of the soft tissue. Just to compress and hopefully form a little bit of papilla in between each of these pontics and abutments. So that little bit of tightness, some people might prefer to just smooth that a little bit. If you want, you could just do a little click with holding down the shift to remove that quickly. And then if there's anything particularly out of line, we can always just go back and add or smooth as we need just onto this buckle profile. Or 
I'll just smooth that back just to give us that nice book corridor. Making sure nothing looks too bulky. But again, keep in mind, this is for us to, to use for provisional purposes. That also matches in with the patient's existing provisional or permanent. And then if we want to just tweak any little bits like here, just using the anatomic functions, get our line angles a little bit better. And then we're pretty much good to go. Other than obviously spend a little bit more time to create that little bit more of an aesthetic look to everything. The last thing we want to do is this interior portion. So where the gum is, we want to add a little bit of strength, especially if we're going to be printing this because you need to have the thickness there that's going to give us the ability to print it and not worry about fractures or problems later on down the line. Again, like I said before, this is just a provisional. So for me, if you wanted to have this same design later on and tweak, if you'd spent a little bit more time in making this a little bit more aesthetic, then obviously you could save that scene to make sure that that is something you can go back to. But for this, for my purpose of just same day all or next that I'm just gonna design this for, I'm not too bothered about what that looks like for the minor details. Obviously the and size ledge, everything is governed by, if we go back to the pre-op, of this pre-op that we've matched the shape to, okay, or close to. If we click next, then we get to design the connectors. So my personal is the personal preference is the teardrop. But that can sometimes place them in the way a little bit. In a full arch, sometimes you want to just really have just smooth the direct shapes to direct to each other. So if I adjust that, you'll see now that that is a perfect content, contact without any specific connectors. And there's a reason why I'm doing that, because once I've created the screw channels, which we've got here, we're just going to cut away. And once we've got this final design, then I'm going to go and adjust the, the finished shape. There we've got this temporary bridge that I'm just gonna go freeform the restorations to make a final little adjustment that just makes me happy in terms of strength. So if we turn off the jaw scan and the antagonist here, what I'll do is just go on freeform, turn the strength and the size really high up and bulk this out on the platal side. Now keep in mind that you can only do this within a limit before it starts getting really quite bulky, but I like to do this just to increase the strength a little bit. If we've got, for example, someone with a heavy bite, and then I'll go in and just to make it more cleansable, smooth out these contacts on the incisor, in, uh, in the interproximal areas too. I'm not gonna be looking at this, the patient's not going to be looking at this. So you want to make sure that this patient can keep everything as cleansed and nice and easy as possible. And also by doing this, we're increasing the strength because we're giving this area of the connectors a lot greater surface area. There we go, just continuing to smooth that out. Where we've bulked it up. You see there's a little error here that's crept in from something. 
that's okay. We can bulk that out a little bit more. And just leave that little bit of a dimple. That's not going to affect us. So now we're happy we've thickened that out a little bit and we've created a little bit more cleansability by smoothing it so that it's not going to attract things into those little divots. And if we finally bring this jaw scan back on, if we want to evade these anymore, we can do. But I'm pretty happy with that. That's all done. So I'm just going to click next and that will refinalize that design. Saving the modifications, yes. And that's as good. Once we're done, we can either go forward and design a model or we can export that and be ready to go. And that is that tutorial done for a quick and easy same day design for you to print off on whatever 3D printer that you're using.